Well, good afternoon. Happy Wednesday. It is hump day, as we say, and uh, just wanted to take a few minutes this morning to share something that God has been stirring in my heart with you. So I'm uh, just going to give you a moment to, there's, hi Lance, good to see you, and uh, some to join in. And as we said, we're going to continue doing these daily devotionals until we are back together and we can meet together face to face. Um, so we know at least through Pentecost, we're going to be here noon, Monday through Friday. But, um, you know, as I was spending some time praying this morning and just really seeking God for just something to share with you, then I came across this podcast and it's uh, I've listened to a couple of them during this time of quarantine, Prophetic Dateline. And the one this morning was more, uh, it was kind of an evangelistic dateline. And some of the, the men and women who were sharing on it were just talking a lot about you know, the harvest. And we hear that, we talk about it, but what does that mean? And, you know, the harvest that we, when we say there is a great harvest to come in, it's people. Uh, and we have some of those names right here. I have these names in front of me that we gathered. People were submitting them at the end of last year. We've continued to receive some names. In fact, I just wrote down a few myself before this uh, that my sister had shared with me. So again, these are names of the prodigals, of loved ones that we know, and some are, you know, also need healing, but people that we are praying for that would either come back to their first love or, you know, come to know the love of Jesus. So that's what I'm talking about when I say first love. And I want to just uh, refer to the reference um, that I listed on here, Revelation 2.4. And that's where we get this term, uh, first love. And it's where uh, they're addressing in Revelation, the book of Revelation, they talk about uh, the angels addressing certain churches. And one was to the church in Ephesus. And that is this reference. And it says, you know, we know your deeds, we know your hard work, your perseverance, all these great things. So this church in Ephesus had been doing the work of the ministry. They've been working hard. They've been persevering through su suffering and hard times and just pressing in to share the word of God, which we would all say those are great things. You know, but as he reads all of these things off, it says, yet you have forsaken your first love. And so, you know, I just was thinking about that this morning and it brought me back to some things in my own life. And so this necklace that I'm wearing actually is a part of um, just a symbol of something that came to me. And it was a reminder, I got it when I went to creation conference uh, years ago. And so some of you that are watching, I know the Ruffners have been there and I think Carrie has, you know, where there's a bunch of Christian artists that happen and it, they come together every summer and it happens not too far from here. It's in Pennsylvania. And, you know, they just come together for a week of worshiping God and they have speakers and these Christian artists. And, and I just remember going to these things at different times in my life, even as a young adult, as a single mom, I went and I would just go and um, just enjoy worshiping God and just seeking him. And I could always feel that fresh fire, that fresh love for God being renewed in my life. And so for us, you know, I just feel like that is something that God is stirring and saying, all right, we have some time left. You know, the, the restrictions are beginning to lift. So we're starting to come out of quarantine. And, and for those, you know, we're in different stages, depending where we're at of this, but knowing too, in this timeline of things, we talked about, you know, we were in Passover and we had, as people say, the Passover of Passovers, which, I mean, it really was, historically speaking, we haven't been in a Passover like we just came through a few weeks ago, uh, ever, 
really to be shut in in our homes, kind of reminiscent of when the children of Israel were getting ready to leave Egypt and Moses was going to bring them out, that they were shut in their homes and they applied the blood of the lamb to the doorposts so the plague would not come near their homes and, and would not attack their families. So they were spared that plague and then they were brought out of Egypt. Well, for us, you know, we have been in the midst of this plague, this COVID, and we continue to pray for people to be set free from it. And, you know, that we will be able to come back out as we're starting to do. But, you know, this is not just, okay, we had Passover and we're done, but we're leading up to Pentecost. And so we we know we've been talking about Pentecost Sunday, May 31st, and we have that time coming in for us. If you're around our community and you can come to Christ Community Church and be a part, we are planning, again, weather permitting, that we are going to have a, a service at 930. So that is our early service that we haven't been able to have since this pandemic hit. And we're going to do it outside in the parking lot so people can come and they can be in their cars. And, and you don't have to worry, especially if you have health conditions that you can be a part and we're going to just be out there with some acoustic worship and Pastor Mitch is going to share so that we can have a service together on Pentecost Sunday. But we are believing as we go to Pentecost for this outpouring of the Holy Spirit. And, you know, if you listen to some of these prophetic voices, they talk about this actually being like the third Pentecost. So the first Pentecost was in Acts 2 with the early church, and it's when Jesus had told his disciples to wait. He said, wait in Jerusalem, do not go out, do not you know, proclaim my word, you will be my witnesses, but you need the power to do it. So you wait to be clothed with that power from on high. And as we know, that power is the power of the Holy Spirit that was poured out on that day of Pentecost. Then we experienced another Pentecost, um, some refer to with the Azusa Street Revival. So that was out in California over 100 years ago. And there was just this outpouring of the Holy Spirit that led to another revival or another great awakening. And so a lot of people are saying, okay, what is this Pentecost going to be? And we are believing that there is going to be another outpouring of the Holy Spirit as we have been shut in and we have been just taking this time to seek God. So I just want to stir your hearts as you're listening today or whenever you come across this to just be pressing in to pray because we're entering the 10 day time period. If you read in the book of Acts, again, just read Acts 1 and into the beginning of Acts 2, and you'll see the time period that we are in because Jesus appeared to his disciples, and it says over 500 people for 40 days after his resurrection. And then he ascended to heaven to be, to sit at the right hand with the Father. But then we have this additional. 10 days because it was a 50 day period from the time that Jesus was crucified and rose again, appeared to everybody. So there was 50 days, 40 days he was here, but then he ascended. So what happened in those remaining 10 days? Well, if you read in Acts 1, it says the disciples and the other believers that were there, they would gather together and pray. They spent time praying as they were waiting. So that brings this hopefully all together. I'm kind of linking these dots of saying, okay, what do we do? What what as we are waiting to come out of this as we are starting to press in you know to life and to maybe going back to work or trying to figure out what things are going to look like you know what do we do with this time and we're past passover but we're getting to pentecost well i want to say we follow what the early church did we pray we press in and pray. And so I have two things really just on my heart this morning in this. And one is for those of us that know Jesus to press in and pray and just have that first love, that first love just fired up that fresh fire in our life, you know, because as I was listening again to this podcast this morning, it just brought up in my heart like that experience with Jesus Christ, just those moments, not even just the first one, but we've all had those times where it's, we've just been brought back in our hearts to, wow, you know, all that Jesus did, he died on the cross, all the things that he went through and he did it for me. 
and he did it for you. And I think about the things that he has brought me out of, you know, I've dealt and I've shared a little bit of this with depression, with anxiety, the things that I used to turn to early on in my life, you know, even turning to alcohol and relationships and things because I had all this hurt inside me and I was dealing with these, these things and I, I tried my best to deal with it in my own strength, but it was never enough. And we each get to the, those moments of saying, well, God, can you, can you still love somebody like me? And when you experience his love and he says, yes, I love exactly somebody like you, that it's his love, it's his mercy. We can't earn his love. It is only through grace and mercy that we can just come to him and say, God, I need your strength. I need to know your love and your forgiveness. And when we experience his love and just that reminder of, you know, regardless of what we have done, that we all have sinned, that we've all fallen short, but that his love and the blood of Jesus covers our sins, regardless of whether in our minds it is this horrific sin or little sins, because we can tend to categorize our sin, but for him, sin separates us from the love of God. So regardless of what it is, whether it's a lie, whether it is jealousy, whether it's anger, unforgiveness, or if it's a larger thing, you know, of stealing or for some murder, all these things that we categorize, God just says sin, period, sin separates us from the love of Christ. But when we come to Jesus, we accept his provision and we receive that fullness of grace. And he says, I love you. And, and you know that love to be true. There's nothing like that. And when we are enveloped with the love of Jesus, then from that, we can't help but share our testimony with others. You know, it just reminds me, and I'm just, I was talking about this with Pastor Mitch earlier, you know, when I went to Dubai two years ago, and I was part of a team that went with Marilyn Hickey, and we were attending conferences and being able to minister. We had pastors coming over from Pakistan that would come just to receive the word of God, to get filled up as they would go back then to their nation and be able to share the love of God, knowing at any moment, it could mean their very life, that they could pay that ultimate price to share the gospel. And, and we were standing in the lobby of the hotel we stayed at one morning and just sharing, you know, right there. We weren't at a conference. We were just talking about God. And I was sharing about my excitement because I was leaving Dubai to go to Madagascar to be able to meet with a team of pastors there. And, and I was just so excited about what God was doing in the nation of Madagascar. And I still am. And I can't wait to go back. I can't wait because God is moving in nations across the earth. But we were standing there just talking about it. And all of a sudden, this young man just ran up and he came around in front of us and he said, you're you're Christians. You're Christians, aren't you? I just know you're Christians. And we said, yes. He said, I could tell because there was just something as you were talking, I could just see like things started getting brighter here. And he said that I used to have a fire within me. I used to know Jesus. And he said that fire has dwindled down, but I can just see, I can see as you're talking and as you're here, that it's just filling this whole lobby of this hotel. And he said, I knew you were Christians. And then he just took off again. But you know, to me, that is the reality of as we experience the love of God and as we share, as we declare, as we just talk about the testimony of Jesus, that if we would truly know that it does affect people around us, even if they don't, they weren't, he didn't know what we were talking about because he was someplace else in, in this lobby was huge, but he came running around because he said, I could see something changing. I could see this light. I could feel this fire burning within me because it used to be in my own heart. And so I am just believing during this time, one, that the fir that fire of that first love, that we would, that would rekindle within our hearts as we think about Jesus and what he truly means to us and what he has rescued us from. For me, he has rescued me from a life that was, 
I felt like I was hopeless and that even though I loved God, that I had messed up too much, that he couldn't use my life. And, and here he is, and here I am, and he is using my life. And that just humbles me because I think of all the things where I fell short, but it is his love that has brought me through. And that is the testimony that I share with everyone. And I say again to you now, it doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter that if you come to Jesus and you say, Jesus, I love you. And I just long for you to be my savior and to use my life, that he will come into your life, that he will give you peace, that he will renew hope in your life because God does have a future and a hope for you for you and for your loved ones. So one, they, that first love would be rekindled in your heart. Two, that the people that you are praying for and maybe ones that you know that used to know God and serve God and just have fallen away or have lost hope and lost heart, that that will be renewed in their lives. And then three, for people that you know that you are praying for. Again, I lift up these names. We are praying over them. And there are people that I know that you have in your life that you can think of that have never tasted that love of God. And we just want to say, taste and see. Because when you taste the love of God, when you experience that love and that peace, that he has for you. I mean, just talking again about the anxiety and the fear that, that wants to permeate our culture right now. Perfect love casts out all fear. We quote that verse over and over again, but it is that perfect love of Christ. So for those that don't know Jesus and have never tasted his love, that they would come to know his love. So my heart is, let's Press in. Let's really press in and pray over the next 10 days. We have 10 days between tomorrow's the 21st, Pentecost is the 31st. Let's spend it as the disciples did in the first century, praying as we are waiting for that outpouring of the Holy Spirit to come. I truly believe that there is a great harvest, a billion soul harvest, this next great awakening, all these terms that we use, but what does it mean? It means people. There are people that are looking for hope, that are looking for something to hold on to, and we as Christians know the hope that they are looking for, and that is the love of Christ. So I am believing that in these coming days, and even in in this coming year as we say what is 2020 what does it hold for us well i believe it holds a harvest and that is people coming to know the love of christ and it begins here as jesus said and he told his disciples wait he said wait to be clothed with the power from on high that you would be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. So what does that mean for us? Well, our Jerusalem means right here, where we are, wherever you are. So if you're watching in State College, then it's in State College. If you're watching from another place, it begins with you, your family, then beyond. And we want to see God's outpouring, the outpouring of the Holy Spirit to come on us, on our homes, in our families, in our state, in our nation, and to the nations, to the uttermost parts of the earth. So that is our prayer. So just join with me now as we press into this. Father God, we just thank you again, Father, as you have stirred up that first love in my heart for you, Lord, just reminding me of the times and once again, just coming back to God, you love us. You love us. You love us enough that you sent your son, Father God, that we would be able to know you. So Lord, I'm just taking a moment right here, right now to say, God, if there is anyone that is listening, Lord, that comes across this and says, you know, it all sounds good, but I've never experienced that, that you will just pray with me right now, that you can say, Jesus, I am taking this moment. I am coming to you. I know I am a sinner in need of a savior. And Lord Jesus, I ask you now to come into my life to forgive me 
of my sins, that you, Jesus, would be my Lord and my Savior. And I say to you today, I commit to you, Jesus, to follow you all the days of my life. So, Father God, I thank you, Lord, for those that have prayed that prayer. Lord, to just say, Jesus, you are my Savior. Jesus, you are my Lord. To come into my heart. Father, that you would just fill them with your peace, with your love, with your provision, Lord. That you have provided everything that we need by your death and resurrection. And Lord, we celebrate them now. And Father, I pray for those that are watching that, Lord, just again, as that first love to be rekindled in their hearts, Lord, that you would rekindle that fire, those flames of fire in their hearts. And, Lord, we pray over those, again, as I have my hands on these names, Lord, that we have been praying over, Father, that you will move in their lives, Father, these loved ones that have never come to know you, Lord, that they would just, Father, they would um, experience your love, they would hear your voice, that they would have dreams and visions even of you, Father God. Lord, that there would be divine appointments. And even, Lord, as they are uh, sheltered in for these remaining days, Lord, that they would come across this podcast or another podcast, Lord, that they would just have a divine appointment and all of a sudden that they would come across something where someone is expressing and explaining the gospel of Jesus Christ and the love that you have for them and that freedom of fear and anxiety that you have, Lord, that they would see that. And Father, that they would come to that relationship with you. So Lord, I agree in prayer right now over all of these. Father, that they would come to know you. Father, even yet today. Father, we thank you that the harvest is plentiful. And Lord, that even more now are answering that call to be a laborer in this harvest. In Jesus' name. Amen. So I want to encourage you to continue to pray. Again, share these devotionals. Put this one out, even as simple as it might be, and, and it's not perfect, but it is the gospel of Jesus Christ that we can have a chance to share with our friends, with our family, with those who we may never meet, but may come across this in a news feed and know that they may receive the love of God. And if you have come across this podcast, I would encourage you to go to our website. We have resources there so that, you know, you can grow in your walk with God because there is so much more that he has for you and for each one of us. So we want to encourage you now. God loves you. He has great plans for your life, that he has a wonderful hope and a future for you. We are standing together in agreement for that and declaring this great harvest that is coming, that we will be able to be a part of that. So please continue to join us noon, um, Monday through Friday. We're excited about this coming Sunday and the message that we have, the good things uh, that God is doing as we prepare for Pentecost Sunday. So God bless you. Be encouraged. God has good things for your future. Amen. Talk to you soon.